Speaker. My question is to the Attorney General and us. Does he stand by his statement that the Marine and Coastal Area Takutai Moana Bill quote, treats all New Zealanders, including Māori, without discrimination? End quote. The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Yes. Materia Ture. Supplementary. Does he agree with the Acting Attorney General that this bill creates discrimination on the basis of race because Māori customary title is weakened by a range of conditions while freehold title is not? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. I, ag I acknowledge uh, the Acting Attorney General's report. What he did say uh, is that such limitations as existed on customary title in comparison with other forms of title were reasonable and he referred to issues relating to access and alienability, the very points that I have been discussing with iwi and hapu around the country Iwi and Hapu do not want uh, customary title to be alienated, and they accept the need for public access. Matira Tude. How is treating title differently on the basis of race, not discrimination on the basis of race? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Customary title is different from freehold title, but the fact that it is different does not mean that there is discrimination. Uh, it is a very valuable form of statutory title uh, which has been developed. As the member would know, uh, in the Ngāti Apa case, the Court of Appeal held that the scope of customary title could range from what they called usufructory rights to something approaching fee simple. What we've done is look at the incidents uh, of ownership and brought together uh, various incidents in this new form of customary title. That is not discriminatory and it reflects what Iwi and Hapu have been asking for. Material today. How does he think that it's fair that Māori customary rights can be overruled by mining concessions while the 12,500 private titles in the foreshore and seabed cannot? The Honourable Chris Minnison. What we're dealing with with uh, mining uh, interests is trying to deal with transitional arrangements as we transition from uh, a, a form of crown absolute ownership to a no ownership regime and one has to have transitional arrangements in those circumstances. Uh, as to the 12,500 titles, I remind the member what I said yesterday, uh, that two wrongs don't make a right uh, and that removing uh, the, the rights of landowners, including Māori and Pākehā, who have uh, freehold title, uh, it simply creates another injustice. Will there be any restrictions on those 12,500 private titles being sold, private titles in the foreshore and seabed, being sold into foreign ownership? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Well, there already will be restrictions so that if, for example, uh, there is a proposal to sell a farm, presumably that will have to go through uh, the approval processes uh, in appropriate channels. What we're dealing with is the proposition that there will be no new uh, freehold title uh, in the area we're talking about. So David Garrett. Mr Speaker, would it be... Uh, my question is to the Attorney-General. Would it be an offence for iwi holders of customary title to charge or attempt to charge for access to the beach? If so, which specific clause in the bill would that offend against, or doesn't he know? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Well, I took, yesterday I took the member through the various parts of the bill that make it clear that it is not possible to charge for access to the common marine and coastal area. And I said to the member yesterday that if someone tried to, there are regulations or regulation making powers uh, which will enable the Minister of Conservation to deal with the issue. I don't know what more I can say. Point of order, the Honourable Rodney Hyde. Look, I'm listening to the member most carefully, and I think it's very interesting to have what he he said yesterday, but the question specifically was, was it an offence? And nowhere did the Attorney-General address that. Well, I, uh, the member's got me a bit there. I, I mean, there is, well, the, member, the member's party has one more supplementary. I'll listen carefully if it's used on this question because 
I believe the Attorney General has pointed out where it's contrary to the to the bill, and assuming the bill becomes law, then I presume it would be against the law to do so, and, and uh, I presume that's what the Minister was saying, but if the member believes that there's greater specificity is needed, I'll listen very carefully to any further supplementary. David, David Garrett, supplementary. Would it be an offence for iwi holders of customary title to charge, or attempt to charge, for access to the beach? If so, which specific clause in the bill would that offend against, or doesn't he know? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. As I've, as I've said yesterday, I, showed, I pointed out to the member the provisions which make it quite impossible for iwi or hapu to charge. I also referred the member, and I can point out the various parts, clauses 118 and 119 and 120 that enable regulations to be established, and uh, regulations could be established to deal with those issues as well. Point of order, the Honourable Rodney Hyde. Mr Speaker, you gave us the opportunity to ask a second supplementary question um, in order to get it addressed. And so we used two questions. And the question was, would it be an offence? Now, the Attorney General has gone on to say, look, there's this piece of uh, clause and there's this clause and it sets out the rights. The question asked, Mr Speaker, would it be an offence? Now, I think we take it from what the Attorney General is answering, that it wouldn't be an offence. But it's very hard to know because he didn't address the question. Well, with respect to the Honourable Member, because uh, it may be the Honourable Member has deeper knowledge than I do, and I, I apologise for my deficiencies if, if that is the case, but the dilemma I perceive is one of, of debate around the answer given. Uh, the question was commendably uh, direct, I absolutely agree, the Minister has answered it insofar as he interprets it. I don't perceive the Minister as trying to dodge the question, but I might be wrong there. But it seems to me that there's, it's more debate around the meaning of what the Minister has said in his answer. And I'm not sure that's refusing to answer the question. I think that is that with some of these things, maybe the answer isn't quite as clear as the Member would like. But it seemed to me the, the Minister has established which clauses make it illegal to uh, block access to the beach. He's established which clause provides for regulations to be made that could cover matters relating to that. Now, I don't have as speaker sufficient knowledge to know whether that is an absolutely perfect answer to the member's question, but it seems to me that it's not uh, an attempt to evade the... I'm, I'm happy to hear the member if he point feel, of order, feels Mr. that... Totally misunderstood this. Uh, point of order, David Garrett. Mr Speaker, with respect, uh, it is um, a, an attempt to avoid, in my view, and, I, and, and for this reason, the question is very carefully worded, as you've noted, sir, uh, referring to an offence. Now, uh, sir, you've said it correctly that you, you can't know because you've not looked at Clause 64, but we have, and I can assure the House that nothing in the clauses cited by the Minister yesterday refer to an offence. That's point one. Order. No, 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 no. Order. No, the dilemma now is the member is actually debating uh, the answer the minister has given. I can't allow that because what I've got here is I'm not a lawyer and I accept my deficiencies. I recognise the honourable member is and so is the Attorney General. I think the Attorney General has listened carefully to the question asked and I think the Attorney General believes that he has answered it. And, and I can't judge the quality of that answer and and I, I'm not in a position, it would be a big call for me to disagree with the Attorney General's answer. It, it doesn't seem to me he's tried to dodge it. But uh, whether or not that satisfies uh, the member, I mean, there are further day, this, this legislation, this matter is going to be around for a while. Uh, if, the, if the Minister's answer is deficient, then it would be possible to devise a question in the future that tests it still further. Speaking to the point of order. Point of order, Honourable Rodney Hyde. Look, I don't want to delay the time, Mr Speaker, but um, this is actually quite important because we only get uh, two questions a day and the issue is this. It's not what a particular clause says. It's not whether a particular clause allows uh, charging or doesn't allow it, and, and that's what the Attorney-General's point is. The issue is, is it an offence to charge? That was the question. Does this legislation set it out as an offence to charge? Now, there's no way 
that the Attorney-General addressed that. I hear the